Oh hey you guys, it's me Cheyenne, and today in my Watch Me Work video, we are going to do a set of duck nail extensions with duck nail tips. If you are interested in figuring out how to do a set of duck nails, or you just want to watch how I did these, continue watching the video and you will see how I did it. So we're just pushing back the cuticle area right now, and then I'm going to go in with my diamond file. This is an Erica's one, I also use a diamond cell now. I recommend them if you want something that you can reuse and disinfect, they work really well, and I enjoy using them. With extensions, you want to have the free edge super short. I don't know why I didn't just clip them. I guess I'm probably just used to using a file when I work because I mostly work on natural nails, so yay me! Then I go in with my diamond cuticle bit. This is a nib style. It is somewhat like a flame bit, but it is a little bit rounder and shorter. This is my client's first ever set of extensions. She has never had, I don't think she, actually she's had one nail service by me quite a while ago, but this is her first set of extensions. So there's quite a bit of cuticle to lift up. And later on, I will trim some areas before I go on to the extension part. I did not film gluing these tips onto the nail because I had a little bit of a hard time. I think the glue by KDS is probably the best glue to use. I used like a, the light elegance glue and it was quite a bit older so I had a hard time getting it to bond to the natural nail. And right now I'm just blending the tip in with the natural nail, making sure that I don't cut any of the natural nail, just sort of blending that tip in. And for tip sizing, you just make sure like a regular tip that it fits sidewall to sidewall or a little bit bigger. And if it's a little Little bit bigger then you just want to file that tip ever so slightly around the free edge to make sure that it fits around your client's nail. I'm also going onto the tip and creating a gritty surface because I'm using hard gel I want something for it to stick onto. I don't think you have to do it like this if you use acrylic. I also decided I wanted to use a tip etching gel from Apre just to give some extra assurance that the gel would stick to the tip because I don't know I haven't done tips in like seven years how am I supposed to know if they're going to stick to the gel. So in case I didn't fill my prep, which I don't think I did, I made sure to use a 180 grit file and removed all of the shine from the nail and then I wiped it with my dehydrator and then I primed the nails with a primer. Now I am going over with a base gel of the entirety of the nail tip and the nail. I always use a soak off base gel with any hard gel service so it's easily soaked off because there are circumstances where you may need to soak off the gel and I always feel like a more flexible base underneath the hard gel actually gives it a better chance of lasting for longer. Because I find hard gel to be quite rigid, I think that having a flexible base underneath is optimal. That's just my opinion though. After that's cured, I very carefully push up the cuticle area to make sure there's no skin that's attached to the gel and make sure that I have a nice even application. And for the overlay of the tips, I'm using the Extreme Gel by Light Elegance and I'm using it in the color Cashmere. I really like the color of this gel. It works well with a lot of skin tones and it's also pretty easy to maneuver once you get the hang of it. And the first step to doing the overlay over top of the extensions is doing a nice slip layer over the entirety of the nail and the tip. After that I grab a little bit of gel and then I place the dollop in the center of the nail and make sure that I have most of the gel in the stress area where the nail is most likely to break and then I just sort of do a back and forth motion with the gel and then I glide it down with my brush. I really like just doing sort of like the half windshield wiper and then going down and swiping down the rest of the gel. This is the way that I like working the best. You should do whatever works works comfortably for you if you are doing a set of duck nails. I found this to be the easiest, especially since this is kind of an extreme fan shape. It's not necessarily this as the same way as doing a standard shape. And of course, I check my sidewalls and make sure that they are covered with gel. Not too much, but not too little. Also, if the nail is a little bit too thin, I'll just send it into the lamp, cure it, and then I will add an extra bit of gel where it needs to be. So some of these nails, I just do a small overlay, and then I add some extra gel in the end to make sure that they are thick enough for my client and that they won't break. So what do you guys think of duck nails? Do you hate them? I think a lot of people don't like them. 
I remember seeing them when I first did nails, and I thought, wow, amazing, those are the coolest nails I've ever seen. You know, a few years later, they became really popular, and I decided, well, you know what, I really should do a set. I really want to do a set on myself, but it's hard for me to work with nails. I think what I'm going to do is create a set of press-ons for myself in this shape, which I think would look amazing, and I'm going to be able to keep them forever and have them when I want them, instead of me wearing these nails and possibly getting really annoyed and chopping them all off. I know this style is not for everyone, but you know what? Sometimes you get bored and you also want to just try something different. You don't want to do the standard shape, you want to do a duck shape. And I think in that case, you should try it out. Why not, you know? We're not here for an infinite amount of time. You might as well do a set of duck nails. And if you don't like duck nails, that's cool too. You don't have to do them, that's okay. Save them for the duck nail freaks, you know? And uh, yeah, that's fine. After all the little duck nails are done, it's time for a little bit of shaping. I just like to go around the cuticle zone and maybe sort of blend any bumps and ridges and make sure that I keep that duck shape. If you go too far filing on the edges, uh, the sidewalls, then it will probably turn into just a regular square. So keep that in mind if you are ever doing a set of duck nails, you want to make sure you keep the original shape of the tip. There's not too much filing that I need to do here, we just, we want those ducks. I always finish my filing of any sort of sculptured nail with a regular file and just make sure that everything looks beautiful.
And then I decided I wanted to do some airbrush hearts on these nails because it was just before Valentine's Day. Unfortunately, this is the airbrush paint that went really watery. I don't know if you watched my last Watch Me Work, but I was talking about how one of my white paints is super watery and the other one is really opaque and I couldn't figure out why. So anyways, I'll save that uh, story for when you watch my last Watch Me Work and I won't bore you here, but I just got these little heart stencils and I decided, you know what, they're gonna be white. Next, I decided I wanted to do a one-stroke rose. Funny, did you know that if you don't practice one-stroke painting, you might find yourself not remembering how to paint a flower with one stroke. And that's exactly what happened here. So after struggling the first time, I wipe it off and then we go for a break and I watch the one-stroke video on how to paint flowers with one stroke on YouTube and I come back and remember how to do it. Thank goodness for YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. Also that like, side heart thing that didn't really need to be there i'm kind of just like winging the art on this set i didn't really plan it as much as i wanted to but uh, i don't know things figured themselves out it worked okay my client patiently waiting while I figure out how to draw a rose. Okay, I got it, I'm gonna nail it. I love one stroke. I wish there was somebody that was like in town that did like one stroke painting classes or there was like, I wish I knew where to have more information about doing one stroke cause I don't know, it, it gets boring trying to be self-motivated for art sometimes, you know? I just wanna take a class. I just want somebody to teach me how to paint a rose or maybe something that's not a rose cause I can only do a rose. I can do other flowers if I practice, but I want somebody to teach me something new. Okay, final touch of the roses is adding little leaves, right? So did some little green and white leaves. Those are cute. It's kind of like a triangle. It's not a triangle. I don't know what that is. Uh, if you guys ever try these, let me know and I'd love to see your work. It's pretty hard to do one stroke, uh, but it's really enjoyable and rewarding. Maybe I should take like a craft class. And I'm gonna show you what the final reveal of these is. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Even if you don't like duck nails, I really appreciate the support. If you have a minute, give this video a like if you liked it or follow me and uh, yeah, bye.